As part of our modular design series, this video is going to focus on the Rhino configuration that we're using for this workflow. Within Rhino, I have three different blocks set up, and each one of these corresponds to a different placeholder or group in Revit. So this the smaller unit here, this studio size unit corresponds to the magenta block. The larger unit here, this two bedroom unit corresponds to a golden one. And this medium size unit with one bedroom corresponds to a teal one. I'm going to turn on this generic model layer and we'll isolate just one level in Revit. I think that seeing these side by side can help us to demonstrate that these have been designed to be within the same 3D space. So as we're sending elements from one program to the other, they're going to come in where we would expect them to be and have a lot of consistency as we're designing. I'll turn these back off and we can focus in on the units in Rhino. Each one of these, if I open the block manager, is a nested block. So we're looking at the entire studio unit as one block and then each of these labeled elements that are in the block manager are blocks that exist inside of that. And as I zoom in here, you'll see that some of these blocks are fairly detailed. I actually downloaded these directly from the Trimble warehouse. And this could be useful for someone who just needs to get a more detailed looking object in their file. Trimble warehouse is pretty widely available, but this workflow could also be utilized by someone who has been using SketchUp for a long time and has a robust library of objects that they use in SketchUp and they want to get those moved into either Rhino or Revit so that they can take advantage of the work that they've already done in the past in assembling those libraries. Now you might notice that some of these elements don't look entirely realistic, especially the walls typically as we're designing. In Rhino, we're probably using extrusions and solid shapes to represent walls. The reason that they're shown here in two dimensions has to do with the compatibility between Rhino and Revit. And if you want to review the compatibility of different types of geometry, we have a matrix for that on our documentation site. Just look for the label called compatibility matrix, and it will detail out what each of the requirements are for the geometry types. If you had a unit where the models or where the walls were set up as 3D types, you could just isolate a single side of one of those walls and use that. One more thing I wanna highlight in the configuration is that we have materials that have been applied to many of these objects, and we have labeled each one with a prefix of RH. This is not a requirement, this is mostly so that I can quickly find these Rhino-based materials once they've been imported. In conveyor version 4, in cases where the material does not already exist in Revit, conveyor will create a new material that has that name. And you can go back into the material editor in Revit and quickly find those materials if you use a prefix like this. Or you can simply just search for the material by name.